Hi, I'm The Rap Critic, and this was a request by Benjamin Gale. And if you'd like to make a request, go to my Patreon for more info. And just in time for the holiday season, let's talk about Tyler the Creator. Because who better than Tyler to personify the gradual shift of Halloween from creepy to commercial? Tyler first came on the scene as this haunting entity whose dark presence derived from frightening mystery and the grim tales he would tell. Nowadays, he tends to have a more acceptable, softer appeal to him, uh, toning down the horror core in favor of telling more personal stories. I mean, the dude has literally done soft drink commercials in children's cartoons. The ice cubization of Tyler the Creator's career has definitely begun. And it's kind of appropriate for Halloween, which started off as a dark, evil holiday, but today it's basically Easter. They're both about kids looking for candy, except it's in strangers' houses instead of brightly colored eggs. And yeah, the mainstreaming of a niche cultural phenomenon does end up stripping a lot of the cultural nuance and what really matters about it, but... I don't know. I like chocolate. All this is to say... Mm, excuse me. All this to say, I enjoy the softer side Tyler's been showing lately. It has more emotional availability, which has given me a better entry point to give his stuff a chance. Now, I recognize that generalizing all of his older stuff as just horrorcore isn't totally fair. He actually uses a lot of his lyrical absurdity as a parallel for his troubled life, and a kind of surreal expression of his inner pain. This coupled with broad, comically horrific imagery and an unassumingly off-kilter aesthetic of bright colors and cat sweaters makes for a unique take on what it means to be hip-hop. Its abrasiveness is repulsive, but in a way that ironically pulls the listener into this weird, unique world that he's created. The unfiltered thoughts of a middle-class black experience, the likes of which hasn't really been explored in hip-hop before. That said... I don't want to listen to any of it. I'm one of those people who does not find his repulsiveness ironically engaging. I'm sorry, I just plain don't enjoy listening to a lot of his music. I just can't slog through Odd Future's overpowering synth blasts and blown out bass lines that don't sound like they've been mixed as much as they've just been piled on top of each other. But while I don't enjoy those songs, I recognize that they have a lot of good moments. It's like they have the lyricism of a second tier Eminem, the creativeness of the best insane clown posse songs, and yet the lazy crassness of a bizarre verse on a D12 album. However, with his latest album, Flower Boy, he's pushed more towards the awkward middle class kid trying to figure out his emotions direction than the manic serial killer direction, which is usually what underlined the imagery of the horrorcore stuff anyways. And I like how he pairs his humor and offbeat aesthetic with a deeper, more mature recognition of his emotional barriers on songs like Mr. Lonely, 911, and Boredom and Glitter. It's the type of unique lane that's missing in hip hop. Now unfortunately, the lead single, Who Dat Boy, is still going after that horrorcore shtick. But I have to say, the intro buildup is absolutely phenomenal. It slowly builds its synths and violins and adds atmosphere for a darker, menacing track. Seriously, this is a perfect intro for the type of song this should have been, but, but, but then it just does this. Who that boy? Who him is? Him that nigga? I swear. All that creepy, haunting buildup just to start it off with, who's that guy? <laughs> He's that guy. I should probably give you more details, but... But I'm not gonna. Although I have noticed a strange writing trademark of Tyler's. The switching up of pronouns. Whereas most rappers would brag in the first person, he takes the MF Doom route, rapping in third person as if he's the narrator of his own fascinating life. And on top of that, there also seems to be an emphasis on breaking specific tenses of words, like in the hook. Who that boy? Who him is? Who them boy? There's this over-pronunciation of wrong tenses that seems to defy any explanation beyond just breaking English language rules for the sake of it. Stand out guy, him don't need no chair, but what the f him at? Cause Right here. And wait, are, are we back in the first person again? Okay, never mind. Or maybe it's showcasing a sort of bipolar behavior, a feeling detached from your own actions one minute and reveling in them the next. Or maybe the lyric is a rejection of praise? Like he's saying, I don't know who you guys are praising, but it's not me because I'm not the great artist you think I am. But wait, later on he's boasting about his style like it's a regular brag track. Fresh to death like he got dressed in a coffin. The boy drips swag like a broken bounce in But then again, the type of stuff he's bragging about wearing is... Cons overalls and a striped shirt. And, uh... Look, I'm the last guy to talk to about fashion sense, but... Overalls? You mean that article of clothing that automatically makes any man look like either a Farmer John poser or an overgrown four-year-old? Okay, so maybe he's being ironic. He's not actually a fashion genius. He's dressed like his mom picked out his clothes for him. And not like a normal mom either, like like the type of mom who, you know, can't let her son's childhood go. Like, she still pushes her son in a stroller even though his feet are scraping the ground, you know what I'm talking about? But yeah, I gotta confess, I can't get a beat on this song. I can't tell if it's being ironic, bragging, swagged out and cool, or cryptic and artistic. But whenever he's not being confusing, oddly enough, I end up taking solace in the macabre imagery shtick that he usually does. That should be the bomb, like he ran in Boston one with his Face blown off, that's how they found him. I know I don't typically like when he does it, but at least it fits the beat better. It feels like he's actually challenging the energy to really translate the dark elements of the production. Man, cause I mean that shit like that. Man, cause I mean push red like that. Why you putting bad vibes in the air like that? Nigga, who them boys? Who them is? Uh... 
Hey, ASAP Rocky. What the fuck are you doing here? Who else came through with a wrist this flick? Make the disappear. How she do that there? Oh, just non-impressively bragging about having money and women. Does this fit to you guys? Does the flossy ASAP Rocky style fit in with Tyler's Boston bombing puns and evoking the imagery of having half his face blown off? Do, do these styles gel to you? I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just thinking too hard here. Guess my pants, do my dance. Spin around, bitch, you can kiss my ass. I am definitely thinking too hard. Still doing math when I miss my class. Was it summertime 06 at the number nine? Nigga. Okay, I'm trying to be chill about this, but th there's something about this lyric that I just can't let go. So, we all know with ASAP Rocky, his rhymes undoubtedly come second to his status as a fashion icon. But here, he seems to go to awkward lengths just to bring it up. Like, the lyric starts off with saying, I was doing math when I missed my class, which is a funny juxtaposition, seeing that he's using math to count up money from dealing drugs while skipping classes about math in order to do so. But for some reason, the main focus of the couplet is on when he was counting this money. And the question is pointedly framed framed as, was it in 06 when I was wearing this expensive designer label, or was it before then when I was wearing that expensive designer label? Basically what I'm trying to say is, while it's nice you throw in a reference to Vince Staples there, I can't be the only one who thought this line was just functionally being used as a contrived way of shoehorning in references to the trendy brands he used to wear. Dollar sign was my favorite number at the time. And the dollar sign isn't a number. Did you not know that? That's like thinking a question mark is a letter. Like, how do you not know that? Right, he skipped those math classes. My mom's just worried because I'm so ill. I should stay in bed, but got too much bread to make. Wait, hold She said, watch my weight. So I stay home and start eating some meals. So you start off by saying, yeah, I know I shouldn't overwork myself, but there's just too much money to make. But then your mom warned you about maintaining a steady diet, and because of that warning, you now shop sensibly, eat at home, and plan your meals. Ooh, are you scared yet? Does the haunting intro fit this ghastly conclusion? Does the motherly advice about watching your caloric intake chill you to the bone? Well, overall for me, I'd give it a 1 out of 5. The buildup of the intro was absolutely solid, but it ended up being wasted on a song that was more shock rap light mixed with stilted flossy rap shit, and it just feels out of place. It's an awkward mashup that doesn't end up playing to any of their strengths and ends up just feeling thrown together. Although I will say their most recent collaboration, Potato Salad, was a way more effective track. It shows their lyricism over a more chilled out beat while Tyler and Rocky deliver more flavorful personalities in their raps. It, it definitely give that track a listen. But as for this, eh, I'm not feeling it. Well, I'm the Rap Critic. You don't have to like my opinion, but I don't have to like your song. Hey, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell if you like my stuff. You know the whole self-promotion thing we have to do to keep the show running. Check out my Redbubble if you want to get the Rap Critic merch. Go to my Patreon if you want to see episodes early and make requests. And join in on my Discord streams, which will be a special treat for patrons when I do live streams on Twitch. So join me over there if you want to do all that. So check out all that fun stuff, and I'll catch you later.